So we left the last video in a bit of a quandary. We wanted to rotate round about the three axes, and we've seen that whenever we rotated in the Z axis, which was in towards the screen, then we would get a circle. And that's exactly what we would expect to see if we rotated a point around that Z axis. Now, whenever we rotated a point around the X axis, then a point here would rotate round like this. So in effect, what we would see from this angle in is just a point going up and down. So a rotation in the X axis, we expected to see a line going up and down, so a vertical line. Also, a rotation in the Y axis, which was like this, we would see a point going round in a circle here. But from this angle here, all we're going to see is just a horizontal line. But we noted that that's not what we got because what in fact was happening was whenever we rotated in the Y axis, we were mapping it onto the XY plane. Therefore, we were just looking down through here and seeing a circle. And also for the X axis, again, we mapped it onto the XY plane. And instead of seeing the line going up and down, we were looking in from, say, this angle here, and we were again seeing a circle. So the question is, how do we get it so that for rotation in the X axis, we see a vertical line and a rotation in the Y axis, we see the horizontal line? Well, the answer is relatively simple. If we want to get to, say, any point in 3D space round about this pencil, then what we can do is we can first rotate in one axis, let's say the X axis. Then we can rotate in the other axis, which is the Y axis. And then we can rotate in the Z axis. So if we rotate in each of those axes one after the other, then we're going to be able to get to any point in 3D space round about this pencil. So how do we do one rotation after another after another? Well, in order to do that, what we're doing is we're composing the rotations. So we take the input values, which is our x not y not z not and we multiply it by one of our rotation matrices, say for example, the one in the X, along the X axis. We take the answer for that one there, and then we multiply it by the rotation matrix for the Y axis. And then we take the answer for that, and we put it into the rotation matrix for the Z axis. And finally, we're left with our final result, which is our final position, which is our X1, Y1, Z1. So in effect, what we've done is we have multiplied together each of the matrices. So that's the answer. If we can multiply together the matrices, then we can come up with a final matrix that we can put into the tool here and it should give us what we're looking for. Now you've got access to this file, so if you want to, you can go ahead and open this up. Now what I've got here are the three matrices which we created in the previous video, and what we're going to do is multiply them together. But the first thing is we ask ourselves is, whenever we multiply matrices together, a matrix multiplication is not necessarily commutative, meaning whenever you multiply a matrix A times B, it's not the same as multiplying the matrix B times A. So it means that if we've got these three matrices, then we can actually multiply these three matrices together uh, in six different ways. So for example, if this was a matrix A, B and C, then we could multiply it the way it is at the moment, or we could swap the B and C roundabout, or we could multiply this one by these two, and then we could swap these two roundabout, or we could multiply this one by these two, and then multi 
swap these two round about. So there's six different ways of multiplying these. Now, what's actually going to happen is whenever we multiply these in those different those uh, different permutations, in effect, what happens is we're going to get an output which is determined by the position that you are looking at an object in 3D space. So for example, if I took a point in 3D space here and I just move my finger round about and that's just some random pattern 3D space, if I look in from this angle, it'll generate some sort of curve. But if I look in from this angle here, it's going to generate a different curve. And if I look in from this angle, again, it's going to generate a different curve. And then also this one, and finally the, the back and the, the front. So there's six different angles that we're going to be looking at here. Now, the reason why there's six is because we're dealing with three axes here, which are what we call orthogonal. Orthogonal, loosely speaking, uh, means at 90 degrees. So the X and the Y axis are at 90 degrees and the Z axis is at 90 degrees to that. So it means that if, for example, we, have a, we had a cube and our little point was inside this cube, then we could look in six different faces of that cube and we would have six different visions of how that point moved in that 3D space. And whenever we change the matrices round about, so we've got six different ways of multiplying these matrices, these six different ways are in effect equivalent to us looking in from the six different positions. Now, I've pretty much picked the uh, values here at random, so I've used this one first and then this and then this one here, and we're multiplying them. But what happens with matrix multiplication as well is that you're actually going to multiply this by this, and then finally we'll multiply that answer by this one. So we're composing them from right to left. So we do this one first, and then this one, and then this one. Now, one final thing to note before we get started is we can actually rotate in two different directions. So in the X axis, we can rotate like this or like this. And in the Y axis, we can rotate this way or this way. And in the Z axis, we can rotate again this way or this way. Now, the direction of rotation is actually determined by the sign here of the sign gamma and this sign gamma, and also the sign here and the sign between these two here. So I didn't actually explain that within the 2D matrix, but if we wanted to rotate a 2D matrix in the opposite direction, all we needed to do is make this one here negative and this one here positive. And again, this one here, if we wanted to rotate it in a different direction, we would make this one negative and this one positive and the same here. So that's a quick and easy way to get a different rotation. So it actually means that we can not only rotate in the three, the six different uh, paths, okay, so there's six different ways of multiplying these three matrices, there's also going to be two different directions for each of them. But we're not bothered about that in too much detail, all we're going to do is just pick a particular direction and we're just going to pick uh, a particular multiplication and that's all I've done here, I've pretty much just picked a random uh, pattern for the multiplication and I've just kept the rotation exactly the same as what we did in the previous video. So let's crack on, now I love talking from me and let's have a look and see what I've done here. So in order to do this, I've multiplied both of these together. This one and this one gets multiplied. So in order to multiply, what we do is we multiply the row by a column. So it's this times this plus this times this plus this times this. So that's that row times that column. And it's got to be, that'll give us this result. And then we're gonna have this row times this column and it gives that result that row times that column gives that result. 
and then we work down to the next row so it's going to be uh, this row times that column this row that column and then this row that column that's going to give us the next three and so on with the next three here so I've already multiplied these out and you can go and try these for yourself and you can convince yourself that these are the multiplications now finally what we're going to have to do is we're going to multiply this one again by this one here and when we do it we get this answer here so this is the final matrix that we've been looking for now a thing to note here as well is that we're only going to have two outputs we're only going to have an x1 and a y1 so we're not actually interested in the z1 because the z1 for us doesn't exist we're only looking in from one direction and again we could look in from six different directions if we chose the different multiplication patterns but we're only choosing one multiplication pattern we're only looking in from one direction and we're only seeing a, a y component and an x component so we're not, we're not interested in the bottom line here which gives us our z1 so we can in effect just scrub that out so the only two that we're interested in to generate here are the value for our x1 which is this here the top line so it's going to be the cos beta cos alpha times the x0 minus sine beta y0 and then the cos beta sine alpha z0 and the same goes for the y1 so these are the two equations here that we've been working towards and what we're going to do is take these two equations and just put them into the tool and we'll have a wee look and see what happens so if you open up the equations folder you'll see that I've just put those two equations in which are our x1 and our y1 we also have the conversion from our degrees to radians the next folder are our inputs which are our x0, y0 and z0 which I've just kept as 1, 1 and 1 we've got our outputs which are our values x1 and y1 and we've got the input angles now the input angles are a value of beta and you'll see it's beta z so it's the z is in towards the screen so this is the angle beta in this axis and the angle gamma is in the x axis so as we rotate around here we rotate around at an angle of gamma and the value for our alpha is in the y axis so as the y axis rotates we rotate round about by an angle of gamma so let's put the values in and let's see if we actually get what we are uh, looking for so we're going to have our input which is in pink and we're going to have an output here which is in blue so at the moment we've got our angles are zero degrees and zero and zero so the input and output is just sitting on top of each other so if this works out properly then we've got our z which is the rotation in the z axis towards the screen which should rotate round in a circle and you'll see that that actually works happy days now the rotation in the gamma by the angle gamma is in the x-axis so that rotation should be here so it should be going up and down so whenever I press that you'll see that it does in fact go up and down and you'll see there's a little overshoot so that's quite interesting and finally we're going to have the value of our angle alpha which is in the y direction which is rotating around this way so it should move left and right so when I press play on that it does actually move left and right so that's good we finally got to something that we are looking for and it does move in a 3d manner but projected onto a 2d screen so let's run all three at once now what we're going to get is some 
repeating pattern. But remember, we're looking at it from the XY plane perspective. So if we think about taking the computer screen and we could lie the computer screen flat on the desk, then this is just going to give us your XY plane. The Z plane would be then upwards and we would be standing above the screen and looking down onto this movement. And this object would be moving about in 3D space, but we would be observing it from the top and it would be generating this pattern. But we could also observe it from the bottom or both sides or from back and front and it would generate a different pattern. So there would be six different orthogonal patterns that this would generate. And we could get those by multiplying the rotation vectors together and uh, one after the other in the six different uh, formats. Also, we could make it look different as well, depending on whether the point starts off by rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise for the X, the Y and the Z axis. So we could complicate it quite a bit, but we didn't need to. We just needed to pick one particular set of rotations and one particular uh, set of multiplications. And we've ended up with this um, simulation here. But again, it's not really what we're looking for, is it? Because it doesn't give us a, an indication that this is actually a, a movement in 3D space, which has been projected onto a 2D axis. So how are we going to get that feeling that we're actually rot uh, rotating uh, an object in 3D space? We will figure that out in the next video when we look at the rotation of not only a point but a line and a plane and then a 3D object.